Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we're talking about Star Wars Unlimited, and we're talking about upgrades, how they work, what they are, some of the risks of using them, and I'm also going to talk about three upgrades that I really like so far in this game. If you guys are new here to the channel, we are doing a new round of the giveaway. It's going to run for about two weeks. It's for a $25 Amazon gift card, and all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Let me know some of your favorite cards in Star Wars Unlimited, or if you haven't played the game yet, let me know your thoughts. What's holding you back? Is there anything that's kind of got you on the fence? Because if you are on the fence, I encourage you to get in and check out this game. I was on the fence about it myself, and I am really glad I dipped my toes into the water because it's a really fun game, and I'm having a great time playing it. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump in to this video. What are upgrades? Well, upgrades are a card type. Uh, if you're familiar with other games like Magic the Gathering, they're similar to like enchant creature spells. They're, they're cards that attach to creatures or to your units uh, or to units in general. They don't have to be your units. And they can empower a creature or a unit somehow. They usually make your units a little bit stronger. Sometimes they're pretty straightforward, like Resilient, which just gives them three extra hit points, three extra toughness. Uh, and then sometimes they give them extra abilities and they'll, of course, print them on the card. In addition to being cards that are also have the upgrade type, they also have certain other traits. Uh, and so, uh, granted, a lot of those traits aren't really being talked about right now, but it's nice that they're future-proofed because future sets might say, hey, uh, learned upgrades now do something else, or innate upgrades are free this turn, or something like that. So, you know, so keep, pay attention to those in future sets as the game grows. You, there's always going to be things that call back to older cards, and so it's important to kind of keep that in the back of your mind for the future. Now, initially, when I first started playing this game, I was advised to stay away from upgrades because there's a risk of putting too many upgrades on a creature, and, or I say creature, but we're really talking about a unit. It's it's the the years and years of playing games like Magic the Gathering that, you know, but like, let's say I put out a Darth Vader and I put a whole bunch of upgrades on him and make him really strong. He's already 5'7 for his unit version. Uh, maybe I wanted to make him, you know, attack for 10, and now I've got this really monstrous you know, this monstrous unit out there, uh, he's still subject to a single removal card or removal spell, as I might want to say. Uh, and, and can I basically, I give my opponent the ability to remove multiple cards at the cost of only one card. And that is certainly one of the risks you take when you, when you start to put multiple upgrades on a single unit. Uh, you put all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Now, I think that is, that's an obvious risk because... It's a big payoff if you get to attack with it a few times before it dies or before it goes away. It's certainly, you know, something that you may want to weigh. Is this worth doing or is it not worth doing? Or maybe if you have multiple units out, you have a big unit and a small unit, maybe you hedge your bets a little bit and you put some of those big upgrades on a on a weaker unit to now all of a sudden say, hey, I've got this 5-7 over here, but I've got a 1-1 one, one over here. Let me put academy training on the 1-1, one, one, make him a 3-3. Three, three. So now even if you remove one, you still got a medium threat coming elsewhere. And you know, so upgrades can allow you to do that. But at the same time, there's another risk of upgrades, and it's that if you need a unit and you only have upgrades, they're kind of conditional cards. You can't play an upgrade if there's no unit for it to go on to. And so that's certainly one of the pitfalls of upgrades that goes in addition to putting all your eggs in one basket. It can be a little tricky. So, well, I say all that to kind of transition into uh, removal of upgrades is another aspect. Uh, there's, there, I want to point out, before we go any further, that also shields and experience. These are going to be on the back of your land cards or your base cards. Um, these also do count as upgrades. So when there is removal, you can also remove shields and experience tokens with upgrade cards. Now, obviously, confiscate is a, a single upgrade removal, but there are also other cards that remove, will remove multiple upgrades. I don't see too many people running a lot of upgrade removal because I don't see a whole lot of uh, upgrades in the game right now, but the game is still pretty young and I haven't played that much. I've probably played 
I don't know, I want to say like maybe 20 to 30 games so far. Not too much all together, but, uh, but I'm still, you know, I'm still learning. The game's still evolving. A second set hasn't even been formally announced yet. So uh, there's still a whole lot to grow and maybe upgrades will change over time. But they're certainly risky right now, but I don't think you should consider uh, skipping upgrades completely because they're, they're, not, uh, they're, they're not terrible. And uh, they, it definitely, it's, I think it's worthwhile to have a couple of upgrades. I don't think you want to have too much. You certainly don't want to have, you know, um, half units and half upgrades is because uh, I, I feel like that's that's a little bit too risky. But I, I think it's important to have a couple of upgrades uh, for when the opportunity arises. For me, I think one of the best opportunities to play an upgrade card from your hand on a unit is when your opponent has demonstrated that they don't have a way to deal with that unit. Maybe it's a smaller unit, or maybe you want to also get them to potentially remove it before you play your big card. So if I have that Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker in my hand, and I'm afraid they're holding on to a big removal spell, I may want to, you know, beef up a TIE Fighter a little bit to draw out the removal before I bring out the bigger card. And that's something else that an upgrade can do. Um, I want to talk about three upgrades that I really do like in this game. And, and the first one is an upgrade that I initially passed over. I didn't like it at first. I thought this was a bad upgrade. It wasn't something I wanted to do. Uh, and it's called Entrenched. Now, this is, a, uh, this is a blue upgrade. It says attached unit can't attack bases, but it gives the unit plus three, plus three. So initially, I looked at this. Now, it costs two. It's not particularly expensive, um, but it's a little more expensive than some, but it's still, I mean, two is not too bad. I initially looked at this and said, okay, so is this just something you put on a creature with Sentinel? So they're not attacking, they're just going to defend, and you know, and, and then they're kind of entrenched in. And I'm like, oh, that's okay, but I kind of, I don't want to limit myself in that case. Uh, but it is one of those upgrades that's beefing a character up a little bit more than others with the plus three, plus three. That's awfully nice. It also kind of works really well on characters that have grit. It's actually a pretty good upgrade to put on if you have like a Chewbacca commander or something like that. Uh, it's a nice option for him. It, you know, again, anytime you have a character with grit, increasing their health can also you know multiply and increase their, their attack uh, that much more as they take damage. So uh, it, it certainly works with that regard. But I want to talk about a couple of other uses for this. Uh, first off, characters with Overwhelm. If you do have a character with Overwhelm, if you give them Entrenched and they do attack other other units, uh, well, then all of a sudden, you still can do damage to bases that way because while you're not attacking the base directly, you can attack another unit, and then that, over, that extra damage will carry over and spill over onto the base. So if I were to put Entrenched on Palpatine and made him a 9-9, nine, nine, and he attacked a 1-1 one, one, creature, then that'd be eight damage that spills over onto the base. So there's certainly uh, ways to still get around that limitation of not being able to attack bases. But there's another even bigger usage for entrenched that I've discovered, and that is to play it on your opponent's units. And why would you want to put this, why would you want to buff your opponent's units? Well, uh, I discovered this when trying to run a, a, a deck that was mostly space-based. I wanted more, you know, fighters and capital ships and all, you know, a lot of space units. And my opponent, um, you know, would probably not have enough to defend against all of the space. But the problem is if I was going to go heavily into space, I was going to leave myself weak on the ground. And it's one of those things that if I'm not going to play any units on the ground, I can play entrenched on my opponent's ground unit. And all of a sudden, now they can't attack me. Uh, and, and, and it worked out really, really well, especially if it was a, uh, a particularly strong unit or a unit that has restore. Uh, my, uh, you know, I, I play against my friend Sean quite a bit, and he'll like to pull out his Krennic and deploy his leader, and then he's got restore two on there, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, okay, well, since I have no ground units, you can't attack bases, so you now your Krennic doesn't get to attack, doesn't get to trigger restore, doesn't get to do any of that. So entrenched can work in that regard as well. And since it doesn't have the restrictions, some upgrades will say they have a restriction of oh, this can only be played on a vehicle, this can only be played on this, this can only be played this way or that way. Uh, it doesn't have those restrictions, so you could do it the other way around if you only want to attack uh, on the ground and you only want to ground and you kind of want to neglect the air a little bit. Entrenched is something you could potentially put 
into uh, on, on your opponent's space unit, and then all of a sudden that space unit wouldn't then be able to attack bases either. So uh, if they can't attack bases and there's nobody for them to attack, then they kind of can't attack at all. It is risky to do that, though, because, of course, uh, if you do have to play a unit or if they just get too much, then taking one out isn't that big of a deal. But it's still nice and it's versatile. And that's one of the things I really like about it because I can use it to power up a character that's got Overwhelm. I can use it to power up a, a Sentinel or I can use it to lock down one of my opponents if I have no defenders in that same arena. And so because it's got so many different uses, I really like Entrenched uh, in the right deck, especially one that's designed to kind of focus on one arena and ignore the other, which I thought was a kind of a cool use for it. Moving on to uh, another upgrade I really like, it's Devotion. I actually have this one in the same deck as the other one. Uh, Devotion is a nice one. It's also two points. It does a little bit of the same, uh, but gives a plus one, plus one, and it gives a unit restore two. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. It's something, it was one of the first upgrades I got when I was doing pre-release, and uh, then I kind of moved away from, from running upgrades, and recently I've been putting it out there a little bit more. Now, this one is a very nasty one. This is definitely one you don't want to put on your opponent's units. Uh, this is when you want to put on one of your own units, and this is definitely one of those upgrades you only want to put out after your opponent has demonstrated that they either don't have a way to deal with a, a, a unit that's attacking, or uh, or they at least haven't haven't played their hand yet, or you know you're trying to draw out a removal card. Um, I particularly like to run this uh, with uh, with my space deck because it allows me additional ways to ignore the ground game or to ignore one arena uh, because the more restore I have, I can kind of make up for some attacks that are coming in on the other side that I don't have a way to deal with. I can just trade because I'm, st I'm still doing damage to your base while healing damage to my base. So if I have an ARC 170 with Devotion, all of a sudden I'm hitting you for three and I'm restoring three. That turns out to be a six-point swing in my favor. So I really like that. Uh, I, I really like Devotion. I think it's also it's also a plus one plus one. Uh, this is also especially cool. Um, you know, if you have if your opponent has a lot of you know, there's not too many air or space units that can hit for more than three. So it allows my Arc 170 to survive a lot of hits if we are trading. You know, space uh, space units versus space units. Although there's a lot of damage removal spells that can hit for more than three. Uh, so it's not, it's, you know, it doesn't make it foolproof, but it does make it a lot more difficult to deal with and can definitely draw a powerful removal spell, or I should say event, because they're not really called spells, but I always want to call them that because it's the old Magic the Gathering player in me. Uh, let's bring on the third and final upgrade I want to talk about that I really like today. It's one of the nastiest upgrades in the game, and this one is exclusively for your opponent's characters. It is Traitorous. If you watched my uh, splitting a box, uh, the unboxing where we, we split up a box, I, I, I talked at length about this card because for the longest time I kept calling it Treacherous and insisting that they are the same word. I am standing by that, even though it has been prot to my attention that most of the rest of the world disagrees with me that treacherous and traitorous are the same word. I am going to stick to my guns because sometimes ignorance truly is bliss. Regardless, traitorous is a very cool upgrade. It's not cheap, uh, but it is a fun upgrade. And it, I don't know long term how effective this one is going to be, but I love this one because it can do so many different things. Well, uh, let's let's talk about what it does at face value. It, it, it be, you, you play this on your opponent's unit, and they have to cost three or less, but it allows you to take control of that unit. And if it ever becomes unattached from that unit, they can they take control right back. So if they do have upgrade removal, which not too many people run upgrade removal, that's why at least right now in the way the game is played, I feel like Traitorous is a safe enough card to run here and there. Uh, but uh, they could potentially take their unit back. But I love this for so many different reasons. I actually run this in a Palpatine deck where I can take control of an opponent's unit and then I can attack them with it uh, if, of course, it was, you know, and this is nice, especially nice if you have the initiative so you can go first after they ready their units. You can take control of it, attack them with it, and then if you think there might be removal, I can sacrifice it uh, to my Palpatine to feed it to f do another damage to someone else, which is a really cool thing because you'll technically uh, be, be in control of the unit for the moment, so then you can uh, get rid of it. Now, this also can combo well if your opponent is running upgrades of their own because if they have powered up a cheaper unit, uh, you can take control of it, and now it's much stronger. 
I've used this against you know relatively cheap units that have grit and power themselves up quite a bit, like speeder bikes uh, that can you know t end up taking a couple of damage in the right deck, and all of a sudden uh, it becomes extra swingy because not only do I gain a, a unit. I also deny my opponent a unit. So for this one card, I'm kind of doing two things. I've summoned my own unit. I've taken a unit away from my opponent. If they had upgrades on that unit, I've taken multiple cards away from my uh, over my opponent. So really like this card for that reason. It also gives me something I can sacrifice. And then there's there's also the fun interaction with some cards like Super Laser Technician because you know not only am I denying my opponent a unit and denying them an extra resource, I'm also potentially giving myself an extra resource as well. So Traitorous can do a lot of really interesting things and I think it's only going to get more and more interesting as time goes on because there's, you know, I think there's always going to be a lot of one, two, and three cost cards that it can, that can be eligible for it. Uh, as this card becomes more popular, though, I think people will want to think twice before putting too many upgrades uh, on cards that aren't at least four cost or higher. I think that's a, a very important thing to think about. But it's a it's a very cool uh, it's a very cool upgrade, and I really enjoy it. So that's my take on upgrades. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts down in the comment section below. You can also join our Discord. There's links in the video description. Social media links are down there as well. And we will keep cranking out content. So just, uh, you know, if you like this video, share the video. Click that bell for alerts. Make sure you're subscribed. All that good stuff. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are out of this world and help make this whole channel possible. I will talk to you later. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. The spice must flow. So say we all and always wash your socks.